The United Kingdom woke up Sunday morning to streets covered in debris and smoldering rubbish following a weekend of far-right, anti-immigration demonstrations. Stoked by conspiracy theories spread on social media, the protests erupted into violence in seven cities across the nation. Police arrested at least 100 people, with riot police in helmets and shields coming out in force as Prime Minister Keir Starmer pledged to take action against extremists. On Saturday, groups in Leeds waving St. George's Cross flags, a symbol often used by far-right groups, shouted, Muslims off our streets, accompanied by slurs suggesting Muslims were criminal child abusers. In Hull, rioters threw bottles and smashed windows at a hotel housing asylum seekers as they clashed with police. The targeted anti-immigration demonstrations quickly descended into chaos. A library in Liverpool, reopened in 2023 as an education to employment service, was set ablaze. One police officer in the city was hit on the head with a chair, and another was kicked and knocked off his motorcycle. The police force confirmed that two officers were hospitalized with injuries. Starmer denounced the violence, stating that the right to freedom of expression and violent disorder were two very different things, and emphasized that there is no excuse for violence of any kind. Not all protests turned violent. In Bristol, demonstrators shouted, we want our country back, and England, till I die, while clashing with counter-protesters who chanted, racist scum, off our streets. The widespread unrest has sparked significant concern and a strong response from the government, highlighting the tension and division within the country over immigration and national identity. Three children were slaughtered in Southport just a week ago, and people have every right to be angry about that. Before these three children, it was the 7-7 bombings, it was the London Bridge attack, it was the Westminster attack, it was the killing of Lee Rigby, a British soldier, on our streets, the killing of a Conservative MP, the arena bombing where our kids were killed, and the stabbing of an army officer just a few weeks ago, not to mention a few. Not to mention, as well, the hundreds of thousands of English girls that have been groomed and raped for the past 40 years that the police covered up because they themselves were scared of being called racist. They themselves were scared of being called racist. Well, we're not. And yes, white Christian people commit awful acts as well. Don't get me wrong. But if we have enough of our own bad people, why on earth would we import bad people from across the world and open the doors to them and say, oh, come on in, why not? That's insanity. That's suicide. And if you're white Britain, you're already at the bottom of the pile in this country. So stop pandering. Stop making excuses for your beliefs. Because why? Be proud to put your own people first. Be proud to be British. Be the warrior that your children need you to be. If wanting a safe country for our children makes me racist, then so be it. It is a label that I'll wear proudly because I don't care what the media says. I don't care what the establishment says. I don't care what the Islamists say or the left because nothing, and I mean nothing, means more to me than the safety of British children. They should all be our priority. We are the leaders and they are the future. It's up to us to fight for their survival. And mark my words now, if we don't fight with every fibre of our being, then British children will not have a future in this country. There'll be nothing left for them. Is that the legacy that you want to leave? It's not the legacy I want to leave. It's not the legacy that our, do you know, generations of our people left for us they left us a legacy and it's our duty now to fight for our children fight for our country and take it back yeah. Thank you, Molly.